what is happening, and I heard you um, doing this because you talked about denominations. Um, as we get older, uh, as, as the churches advance and the community and, and cities around it have advanced, what is the role of denominations and does that matter as much? I noticed that Friendship West, it says Friendship West, but it used to be Friendship West Baptist Church on everything. Was that intentional? Yeah, it is. Uh, number one, and I love it, there's a generation that you're a part of. And the whole emphasis now is we want to be, it's, it's about being spiritual and not necessarily religious. Okay. Because religion has turned off people around the world, especially in this country, because religion has been associated with so much evil, mm -hmm. so much that's unjust. And unfortunately, there are very few denominations who have clean hands. I can't think of any. You know, most participated in the slave trade. Uh, others, especially black denominations, have been acquiescent to, you know, oppression mm -hmm. and have not been, you know, courageous, bold in denouncing what is wrong. And so as a consequence, you know, I look at that. And I get why, why, why there's a generation saying, you know, hey, forget the church, you know, forget religion. But I do want and recognize I need a connection with God. Yeah. And so what we discovered, and my daughter helped me see this, is that, you know, her generation was like, you know, I care less about the denomination. I want to know, you know, can I come to your worship experience and have an encounter with God? Can mm -hmm. I experience God? Can I leave there feeling a certain way spiritually as opposed to going through a religious kind of process mm -hmm. that is like empty, ceremonial. you know, ceremonial, mm -hmm. that means little. And, you know, so I feel that because okay. I think that when you look at, again, the Jesus I'm checking out, you know, I'm checking out a Savior who was more concerned about, you know, not the religion you subscribe to as much as your relationship with the God who created you that then influences, inspires, and impacts your relationships around you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and what happens, you know, when life comes at you. So, so for me, you know, I think we're moving into what has the possibility of being a very empowering time with the church because the church has got to check itself so it won't wreck itself because it's like, okay, are we going to be about creating a climate for people to experience the Lord or are we going to have them go through you know, da 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 and it means nothing. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, well, no, that's definitely, uh, I mean, I'm sure there was some, uh, or backlash with, uh, you know, your older church members. They're oh, like, yeah. well, see, this is how oh, you yeah. do it. Before you become an usher member, you had to do this in church, right. you had to do this, you had to circle here, and then you might get to be an usher. Right. And, you know, some of those things are, it's important. It's a piece of what church oh, yeah. means to them. So oh, yeah. taking that away to say, hey, um, and I know it's a lot of churches are, you know, taking away the Baptist, the, 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 oh, right. the missionary Baptist church, the Southern right. Baptist on the corner, you know, that type of thing in the churches. And uh, honestly, for me, it has been a melting pot of, are we all praying? <laughs> Is it getting up there? Yeah. Did he hear me? Yeah. Whether I say it in Jesus Christ and Father God or the right. way that I get it up there. Is it, it, did, he, did he hear me? Do I feel good. like he got me? That's and that good. type of thing. No, that's real. And so, you know, when I look at the makeup of our, like, like Sunday, we had like 50 people join. And I looked at who joined that demographic. You know, it's, it's young people, yeah. you know, who are like really hungry spiritually yeah. and could care less about, okay, the what? human-made stuff yeah. that we come up with that sometimes gets in the way of people really connecting with God. And so, you know, and let me hasten to say this, because people may hear this and say, oh, he ain't Baptist no more. Okay, yeah, that's a part of who I am. No question mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Am I emphasizing that? No, I'm not going to emphasize that, because to me, the emphasis, especially if we go back to the origin mm -hmm. of Baptist, you know, it was about freedom. It was about you know, uh, yeah, it was, it was basically about freedom. And so 
I basically have gone back to that. Yeah. And you don't have to have that name in order to walk in that, you know, doctrinal freedom. And so for me, you know, a lot of folk are Baptist, but they may not be Christian. Mm. So if you ain't Christian, but you all Baptist, then you're going to be a Baptist in hell. Yeah. You know, and you're going to be a Baptist who participates in the slave trade, a Baptist who participates in oppression mm -hmm. of men, of, of, of black people, of women. You're going to be a Baptist who does stuff wrong in the name of Jesus, but guess what? Ain't no Jesus in it. Right. So, you know, for those who may have issues with that, you know, my main thing is I want people to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that empowers them to make a difference in this world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. So one of the things I know that your church, um, and I say this about every man in the position of power, is that, not saying you, but most men don't see sexism until they have a daughter, until they, until they have their baby girl, right. their wife, their mom grew up around it, didn't see it. And my husband said the same thing about Avery, and he goes, Oh my gosh, she can't grow up in a place where she's making 69 cents for every white male dollar. Right. And I'm like, That's right. Bro, what about me? My right, whole life. Right, it didn't right. him until he had that girl. Right. One of the things that attracted me to your church is that, uh, you know, in the church I grew up in, the women at the most were the first lady. Right. They could be in the choir, and then they could never be the deacon, right? They could never um do first communion they could do first sunday it was always reserved for the men and then uh, in my husband's church the men even sit in the front and there's a separate role for them that never a level of leadership where men could be a part women could be a part of that right. i know this is different in your church we right. have female ministers and you know you elevated women to a place where they could even be in the pulpit right, right here right. with you when we have guest pastors uh tell me was that intentional oh that, that.